program SpaceX has plans to land on Mars. But what could happen when SpaceX reaches Mars? There are plans for this program to send the first humans to the red planet in the year 2024. For those of you who are not familiar with this program, let us introduce to you the SpaceX program and its goal. SpaceX Mars program is a development program initiated by Elon Musk and SpaceX in order to facilitate the eventual colonization of Mars. The program includes fully reusable launch vehicles, human-rated spacecraft, on-orbit propellant tankers, rapid turnaround launch and landing mounts, and local production of rocket fuel on Mars. The idea of SpaceX is to land people on Mars just 55 years after they have landed on the Moon. What is even more interesting is that the Apollo missions on the Moon only involved a short stay on the Earth's satellite. SpaceX aims to make Mars a permanent home for humans. You have to admit, that is a revolutionary idea and could change the life as we know it. Because of the alignment with the Earth, the journey for the first group of astronauts to Mars is expected to take about 5 months. But what will they do when they get there? In this video, we are going to share with you all the possibilities for humans on Mars, and we are going to look at the initial structures and systems that astronauts would set up to begin colonizing Mars. That is why you should stay with us till the end. Before diving deeper into the video, please subscribe to the channel. We really try our best to give you the best information, and a subscription will mean a lot for growing this channel. You should be aware how complicated the mission to Mars is. Before setting foot on the surface of the planet, they have to figure out the sources of water, food, and electricity. These are essentials for humans and machines on Earth, so they have to simulate that on Mars. SpaceX plans to achieve this by sending two BFRs on uncrewed missions in 2022, carrying a large array of solar panels and critical equipment such as mining systems. So, the essentials go first, then the astronauts. The system for mining is the basis for SpaceX's automated propellant plant, which it aims to expand with each new mission to Mars. Most of these kinds of missions is in the planning phase. Everything has to be planned beforehand. The propellant plant will process the large supply of carbon dioxide and water that can be found on Mars using the so-called Sabatier process. If you're not informed, the Sabatier reaction or Sabatier process produces methane and water from a reaction of hydrogen with carbon dioxide at elevated temperatures, optimally 300 to 400 degrees Celsius, and pressures, perhaps 30 bar, in the presence of a nickel catalyst. It was discovered by the French chemists Paul Sabatier and Jean-Baptiste Sanderens in 1897. This process is for the creation of oxygen and methane which will then be liquefied and used as fuels to bring the astronauts back to Earth. If everything previously mentioned succeeds, and all the processes are done as planned, SpaceX will send the first humans to the Red Planet in 2024. But this mission is not only going to carry humans. They are planning to get on Mars two cargo ships and two crew ships. All of the crew ships will carry around six to eight astronauts. Those astronauts will be there from a few months to a few years. For all the time being there, they will continue to set up the propellant plants. By the way, Mars is around 140 million miles from Earth, and this planet is one of the Earth's closest habitable neighbors. Mars is about half again as far from the Sun as Earth is, so it still has decent sunlight. The planet is relatively cold, but there are plans for warming it up or to warm up just the places where the astronauts are going to be. Its atmosphere is primarily CO2 with some nitrogen and argon and a few other trace elements, which means that we can grow plants on Mars just by compressing the atmosphere. The gravity on the planet is about 38% of that on Earth, so you would be able to lift heavy things and bound around. That could be fun, and you would be significantly lighter on Mars. Furthermore, the day is remarkably close to that of Earth. After landing on Mars, the astronauts' first job is to set up a base. It's unclear what the first Martian base will look like, although many have suggested it should have a design similar to the International Space Station with compact pressurized modules, allowing room for expansion. 
There are some thoughts that the first base on Mars should be underground, so the astronauts are protected from the huge radiation or the extreme weather that can be seen on Mars. You are familiar with Elon Musk's Boring Company. That company can be used to dig possible tunnels underground on Mars. The Boring Company is an American infrastructure and tunnel construction services company founded by Elon Musk himself. Its current and proposed projects are designed for intracity loop transit systems. Although the company has stated that current tunnels are being built so they could support eventual transition to hyperloop based transportation on longer intercity routes. This company has already completed two tunnels in Las Vegas for loop traveling. It has also completed one tunnel for testing hyperloop and loop travel in Los Angeles County. Other tunnels are in various stages of discussion and planning. Musk cited difficulty with Los Angeles traffic and what he sees as limitations with the current two-dimensional transportation network as his early inspiration for the project. The Boring Company was initially formed as a subsidiary of SpaceX, becoming a separate and fully independent company in 2018. So this company might be the one that will help the astronauts to make them the underground homes on Mars. And one of the biggest questions is where are the astronauts going to get their food from? The first group of astronauts on Mars will carry a two-year supply of vacuum-sealed packets of food. This kind of packaged food is light and compact as those used on the International Space Station. Astronauts will not grow their own food at Mars, or at least they are not going to rely on that kind of food. It is likely that they will bring greenhouses on the first mission to experiment with growing food and possibly supplement their food with freshly grown products. If they succeed with growing food, that would be remarkable, and they can eat fresh food as well. To move around the surface of Mars, astronauts will also need to have a vehicle that can tackle the rough terrain. NASA is developing a space exploration vehicle for this exact purpose. It is a pressurized vehicle that can support four astronauts for 72 hours. As with multiple SEVs on the surface of Mars, this would allow astronauts to travel more than 125 miles in either direction, a huge jump from the lunar rover's maximum 6 mile range on the moon. The first temporary habitats will be their own crewed starships, as it is planned for them to have life support systems. However, the robotic starship cargo flights will be refueled for their return trip to Earth whenever possible. They need a sustainable base, and the proposition is that the landing zone has to be located at less than 40 degrees latitude for the best solar power production, relatively warm temperature, and what is most important, it must be near a massive subsurface water ice deposit. As we said earlier, the water caps on Mars are crucial for the mission's success. The quantity and purity of the water ice must be also on a needed level. There were studies earlier, and by SpaceX estimates, the propellant plant is required to mine ice and filter its impurities at a rate of one ton per day. Elon Musk recently said that this company SpaceX is aggressively moving forward with their plans to develop the necessary rocket technology because he believes that establishing a human settlement on Mars will be crucial for our species' long-term survival. This is very much a big plan that could affect all of humanity. Last year, he also proposed an aggressive timeline of getting the first crew to the surface by 2024. Should Earth become uninhabitable due to natural or man-made disasters, he says having a backup planet will be humanity's best chance. On their official website, they are quoting Elon Musk himself, saying that, You want to wake up in the morning and think the future is going to be great. And that's what being a spacefaring civilization is all about. It's about believing in the future and thinking that the future will be better than the past. I can't think of anything more exciting than going out there and being among the stars. <laughs>